by the blow I gotta stay on my hustle, you know that I'm grinding for sure I came out right from the bottom, now they see me chasing my goals Now they see me on the go, yeah. now they see me on the road It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow I'ma shoot for the stars and we ain't for the gold It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow What's up everyone, welcome back to Hustlers, I'm your host Loss um, We've got two pretty special guests on today, Teddy, Teddy Stanaway and Liam Messon What's up boys? What's up brother? Brother? What's been going on? Nah, oh. staying out of this uh, COVID lockdown, trying to keep our season going, but we're safe for now, so... Bro, you, must you, bro. Pumped, you must be pumped to be back on the field, G. Yeah, no, nah, we are, bro. The, uh, we're in lockdown for three weeks, so it's just good to get back out on the footy field and, and throw the ball around. Um, had a bit of a scare yesterday, obviously, with uh, a few cases in the Waikato, but uh, Auntie Cindy done the right thing. <laughs> well, let's continue, so... I was talking to um, Sefo, and he was saying that um, you guys might have had to move down to Topo or something. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so the team had like literally like about five, six hours to, to pack up and get ready to, to move the whole base down to Topo for forever how long that if we were in lockdown. So, um, yeah, just thankfully that we didn't have to and can stay home now. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Teddy? Oh, how's um, the beautiful part of northern France? Yeah, no, nah, it's all good, bro. We are... Uh... We've been dealing with what you guys are dealing with now for the last couple of years now, bro. So it's um yeah, it's sort of getting a bit of a normal day to day life having to deal with that stuff. But um they've thankfully they've they've kind of uh come up with some processes to let our footy season carry on going and, and we can sort of have a little bit of normalcy, having some crowds at our footy and kind of having some uh certainty of, of playing some games. Um, but pretty much everyone over here is vaccinated. So you uh, uh yeah. So pretty much every every player um in our in our comp vaccinated, probably maybe two or three per team. And then um the way it works for them, they have to do like a PCR test every 48 hours throughout the week. And then they can't play unless they've got a clear PCR test 48 hours before the game. Oh, oh shit. Do you have to um quarantine the travel in Europe at the moment? Nah, it's pretty it's pretty relaxed. They were like uh there's a like there's all these little random French uh countries that like it because it's still France, you can kind of jump in between them and like cruise around. So yeah, that uh people are kind of living it up at the moment, doing the travel and yeah, but yeah, it's not kind of what you see in the in the news, to be honest. Like we you can, uh, I live on the, in the Pyrenees mountains, sort of on the border of Spain. And like, I can hop over to Spain if I want in a couple of hours. Get oh, bro. Yeah, bro. How so, good is that? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a, it's an experience, bro. Very. Mean. Um, I'll quickly make a shout out to our, um, our sponsor of this podcast. It's White NZ, teeth whitening company, best in the game. Um, you boys will have to get around it. Got a little package here. Um, so that's one of the ones you put in your mouth and do a little 25 minute session every day. Um, be running it for weeks to get more good. So, um, click the link in the description or use Hustlers discount code um, at the website and you'll get 20 bucks off your um, your teeth whitening kit. Um, get the pearlers going. So, um, but did you guys, we'll start with you, Liam. Um, just a bit about um, who you are, what you do. Uh, yep. So, yeah, just a, uh, hold on, just a footy player, very just a, uh, just uh, grew up in Rotorua, I uh, moved up to Hamilton uh, almost 20 years ago now, shit, I'm old, but uh, yeah, um, been here ever since, been to Japan and, and France um, throughout my rugby journey, but uh, yeah, settled back here in Hamilton now, bro, so in between all that 20 years, a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of effort and struggles, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, good to good to still be throwing the ball around at yeah. my beautiful age. How good is it to be back in the old Mulu jersey, bro? Yeah, it's good, bro. It's awesome. I really enjoy it. Um, obviously, one of my, my good mates, Ross Philippe, is the head coach. Um, and got a few lads uh, help coaching out, which is awesome to, to be able to work with them on that sort of side of it when they're, they're coaching me. Uh, but just really enjoying the young young talent that we have in, in the Waikato. They're an awesome bunch of kids. Uh, work really, really hard. Um, they care about each other and they care about our environment. 
um, and always willing to, to learn and grow. So um, it's always a pleasure to, to be able to go into work every day, um, you know, and better, you know, like I said, throw that ball around. Mean, mean. How about you, Teddy? Yeah, bro. So I'm, uh, uh, yeah, same sort of footy player, dad, um, and uh, sort of dabbling in a bit of business at the moment too, and f- trying to set up some some life after footy too. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so I've in in uh, New Zealand. I played for played in Auckland, and then spent some time down in the Bay before I played for the Sevens, and then um, spent a bit of time in, in the Sevens and. It's where me and Liam sort of linked up originally. And then uh, that sort of led me to come over to France and then been over in France for the last couple of seasons. Uh, it's my fourth season now in France. Um, so yeah, and then kind of the main reason to be over here was just to, to sort of show my, I've got three baby girls and uh, to sort of show them the world and kind of give them some other experiences and uh, broaden their horizons too, to see, you know, other cultures and, and kind of, um, yeah, just give them an experience. So, which is, it's working out like my, my baby girls are at the moment are bilingual and uh, uh, so, yeah, they're, they're in school at the moment, just fully French. Um, and yeah, just to like see that, that kind of excites me and keeps my fire burning to, to keep playing footy and keep us over this side of the world too, just to let them have a, get a, as much of the experience over here as possible so they can remember it before we come home. But um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of what, what I'm up to at the moment, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you were a, um, you were a Marlin, eh? Yeah, bro, Marlin. Bro, there's a, there's a couple of little uh, things we've sort of crossed paths there at St. Kent's. We yeah. played, uh, played for the Marlins down the bay. You playing the Marlins at the moment? Yeah, I've, I've, I was with the Marlins this year, bro, yeah. Um, but St. Kent's, what a school, eh, Liam? What a school. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, eh? Never, never heard of St. Kent's, bro, when I was growing up. <laughs> Actually, Until they started poaching all these players. <laughs> like Teddy. Hey, nah. <laughs> nah. So, what's you guys met in the sevens? Yeah, so that was my first year. So, my was my first year in the sevens, and then there was Liam's first year back in the sevens after. So, doing his, you captained them for a while, eh, bro, and then went off and did your thing with the. The big dog, and... he came back and tried to have a crack at the uh the Olympics, so he played a full season or half a season, so I was bloody injured most of it. But um, yeah, gotta have a crack at the, the Olympics, which was uh good fun. Yeah, so you both went over to that. So I, <laughs> I ended up going over, bro, and then uh, I, the, the game we ended up going for uh, like a warm up sort of week before in Florida before we went down and played against the USA during the week. Snapped my hand in half two days before we went down to the Olympics and then my man over here sort of replaced me. So I, so he ended up coming over and replacing me. And I, I <laughs> oh, shit, in no way. Yeah. That is sweet. That is sweet. Yeah. Later, that was good. We, we got the link up and sort of cruise around Rio de Janeiro, oh. do a few things. Um, because the boys were in the village and then Liam sort of had to stay with me for a little bit before he was allowed into the village to get his accreditation. So we had a look around and got to see some cool stuff, bro. So you got to stay out there? Yeah, so literally I it was the, the day before the, the flight, they they pulled me out. So we were in Florida already. All my things were booked, so I went down. But funny story, bro, my mum had sold her house to come come watch me. So she oh. sold her house and uh, to come watch me in the Olympics. And then uh, spent a few thousand dollars in uh, accommodation and tickets and everything. So that was already booked. So they came over and I went, instead of leaving, I went and joined them and, and stayed with them and we stayed and supported the boys. And I sort of got to spend and watch the Olympics with my mum in Rio. And uh, and yeah, so it's kind of bittersweet, like you said, but um, yeah, it was a bit of a journey, bro. Roller coaster. Bro, people would like, like talk about you know, missing stuff and like, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's just a sport and, um, you know, you, you miss the, miss the tournament, like, oh, like you'll get another chance or, you know, you're just grateful, grateful to be there and shit, but no, no one sees that sort of stuff, eh? Like there's, there's a lot of things that are you, I bet you not many people knew that, that your mom sold your house to come and, to come and have a watch of your son play at the Olympics. Bro, it was crazy. Cause <clears throat> she, uh, 
I look, I uh, so obviously I I kind of you look at the team, everyone's a household name except me. I was I was pretty clear at the start. I was it was my first year in the sevens with the boys, and I was I was signed as a bag holder pretty much just to like you know fill the we needed some some numbers in that. So I, but then I kind of took it as an opportunity. My foot was in the door and just went hard, but the writing was on the wall. So I. Uh, we didn't really expect much. And then I uh, it wasn't until I got named in the squad. We probably had like maybe six weeks before we flew out. And in that six weeks is when my mum, well, she couldn't afford to come over. So she decided to sell the house in that six weeks and boom, sold it in that six weeks. And she literally signed the deal to sell it the week before she had to fly over. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, bro. So uh, it was all... And then that's all signed, sealed, delivered. And then a couple of days later, she gets to uh, give her a call. And, Sorry, mum. <laughs> oh, <playing. no. laughs> but, uh, but no, it was, it was, it was, but like, uh, she didn't care, bro. Like it was, it was, uh, even when I told her, like it was, it wasn't just my Olympics. It was our family and family's Olympics. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was just, she was coming over anyway, bro. And like that team with, sort of become family, you travel the world with the boys for like 10, 10 months together, you kind of become a family too, so I wanted to see the job finish and and, uh, and yeah, so we stayed and then still still got to spend uh, time in Rio de Janeiro with my mum and my wife and my auntie uh, cruising around and sort of seeing another culture too, so it was just another experience bro that you can't kind of put a price on. 100%. Um, bro Liam, how, how did you find like all your um, like juniors overseas, playing overseas and that, like what you sort of earned and did like that? Yeah, it, oh, it was awesome, bro. Like uh, my first year, um, I went to Japan. So I played three seasons in Japan first. Um, the first season, I sort of, oh, I didn't like it at all. I, was, I found it really frustrating. Um, the rugby? And yeah, the rugby, just because, you know, you sort of, you come from, from New Zealand um, or you come from a sort of a culture like the Chiefs or the All Blacks and then you, you head over to Japan and, it's not. It's not their fault. It's just you know, just the way that I sort of, I sort of took. And a lot of, a lot of players struggled their first year just because of that reason. Um, and you expect it to be the same as home, but it's, it's totally opposite. Um, different coaching styles, different style of play. Um, you know, everything was different. And I was at a club called Toshiba, and I was playing with uh, again some of my really good mates. I just happened to, to be at the same club. Um, guys like Richard Kahui, uh, Lats, Tony Lerma. Stephen Donald, so um, I had a good good catch up with uh, Kahui actually, and he just said, um, "Bro, it is what it is. Just you know, just accept it. Just have a real open mind, um, and just enjoy the culture and enjoy the boys, um, and then we'll see how we go." Because I wanted to leave after my first year, and after that happened, um, the second year, third year, absolutely loved it. Um, just loved the culture, the traveling around Japan, um, and enjoying everything. Um, and the rugby um, ended up enjoying really the rugby, the style that the Japanese try to play. You know, they play a real fast game and it's quite skillful. People don't realise how skillful the Japanese rugby is. Um, so once I sort of changed my mindset into to what I was going over there for, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, really loved it. And then by the time I got to France, I'd really gone through the, they call it the first year blues when you leave uh, New Zealand. Um, so I really had that open mind um, to come when I went to France. I knew the rugby was going to be different. I knew the coaching was going to be different. Um, the language barrier, obviously. Um, so having that sort of that mindset of just being open-minded about things and and caring, but like sort of not not caring if that makes sense. Um, I still had kept kept my standards of of my rugby because um, I always you know have personal standards that I want to play to and have a level of of intensity or what it may be. Um, but then once I had that open mindset, it was uh, yeah you could see the world in a different view and it was awesome. It wasn't just the the New Zealand bubble that you get stuck in sometimes with rugby. So. Once I opened up my eyes and saw that, it was, uh, you know, the, the best uh, decisions that I made to, to be able to go over there and, and see the world. And that's the beauty thing about rugby, that you can, can do that. Which one did you enjoy more, bro, out of the, out of the two? Uh, oh, lifestyle, I'll say um, France. France lifestyle was awesome. I really enjoyed France. Um, just the lifestyle, the boys, the culture. Um, I was at the club called Toulon, so we're right in the south of France. One of the most uh, beautiful places uh, in the world. Um, and probably tell for them, work. Tell them about the boulangerie. <laughs> yeah, food, the food's amazing. Japan, the food in Japan's amazing and in France. So come back a couple of kgs heavier, but that's, uh, that's all good. Um, but for rugby, I do enjoy the, the top 14 in France just because, you know, it's, it's big. 
Um, but it's just a real long season. Um, Japan is fast as like a game of touch. Um, and you earn your money. Let's just say this, you earn your money in France. Um, we're in Japan. Yeah, sometimes you know, you're on the bench, you don't get a game or, or whatnot because of the foreigner rule, but um, I'll probably put France as, as my top top place. Yeah, I mean, um, T, you played anywhere else or just, just France? Other just than France, yeah, just France. So I like, I didn't make the sevens until I had a bit of a roller coaster journey, pretty unorthodox, bro. So I didn't make fully professional footy until I was about 26. Oh, yeah. So I spent, spent a few years in the, with the sevens, three years or so, and then come over straight away when I was about 29. And then yeah, it's been uh, 10 years ever since. As both your your French. Ça va, ça va. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hard, eh? It's, bro, it's, a, it's a hard language, bro, but it's, it's a mean language, but it's, uh, it's got, you know, the it's kind of like Spanish with the feminine and masculine you kind of learn a word, but then when you use it in a sentence, the word is totally different. So it's like, why am I learning this word if I don't can't use it in a sentence because it's different? But yeah, it's <laughs> it, it's hard, bro. But it's it's cool. Like I, uh, it, I've got a cheat code now with my daughters because they they're fluent. So I now when I get stuck, I just babe, what what is he saying? <laughs> Man, you took your daughters over there, and now they're teaching you. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Did you take no, them over too, Liam? Yeah, my, yeah, took them over at the start. Um, being in Toulon is uh, maybe probably the same with Teddy as there's uh, zero English. Yeah. Um, so my, my boys are a bit older, so uh, took them a little bit longer to, to learn. My youngest learned it. Um, and oh, he picked up on it pretty quick, but my oldest struggled. Um, and then they came, they came home after the first year. Um, but yeah, they, they love France. Uh, my older son's a, a massive soccer fan, so he, uh, you know, being in France, they we when I got there the first year, that's the year they won the, the World Cup. They actually had just won it when we landed, so the, the country was in a massive buzz. Um, my son fell in love with PSG, um, so you know it's uh, yeah, he, he loves France now. So um, it's, yeah, like Teddy said, it's a great great eye opener for them. So my kids have been to some places that um, other people don't really get to get to experience. So. Um, you know, they're pretty lucky and, and grateful that they get to go to experience those things, even though at, at a young age. Yeah, that's something um, probably a lot of players in New Zealand don't take full advantage, advantage of it, is using the game to sort of travel the world, see the world, because, um, and even like give your, like you said, your family opportunities to see the world. And um, would, you, would you guys ever consider playing somewhere else, like, um, like, that, like the MLR or something? Because it's sort of taking off at the moment. It might be pretty big in a couple of years. What do you reckon, bro? <laughs> you still got a, a, at least another three seasons left in you. Well, I'll take whatever I can get, eh? <laughs> <laughs> They're in there. Their American comp looks awesome, bro. Like I've got a few of the boys I know that's over there and just watching their stories on Insta, living the dream, bro, just yeah. cruising down to Tijuana and doing the coast and... You know, like it's similar to being over here, but it's just, you know, a different side of the world and another experience of culture in that. So, yeah, I'd kind of what Liam was saying, kind of, you just sort of take what you can get in terms of going a different, I'd love to go to Japan as well. I'd love to, yeah, sort of go around, but um, yeah, for me, I'm kind of heavily invested over here, just to, especially with my family, just to try and give them some stability and just get some, uh, a handle on the culture and the language and that just so when we leave they've got something to take with them if it's just a language you know so they're bilingual in some sort of way or something like that but but yeah those that comp does look exciting bro it does look like it's gonna um pop off in a couple of years eh? yeah yeah for sure i reckon um what what do you, do you guys have like a think back of your instantly what comes to your head your favorite sporting moment or your footy moment to date Instantly, oh, for me, it'd probably be a uh, first title for the Chiefs in uh, 2012. That sort of pops up to my mind. Um, nice. Yeah, the top of my mind. Are you, Teddy? Mine, uh, uh, mine's probably the, the first tournament in Hamilton that we played for the Sevens and uh, got to sort of run down the sideline and score a try, but 
so when I was running down the sideline, I got the my family was in the corner that I was running to, and just to be able to do that in front of my family and um, and, and sort of run towards them, and uh, you know, uh, it's kind of one of those dreams that you think about scoring and like you know doing something like that when you're young, and then to actually live that out and that be one of my last sort of memories in the jersey as well. Um, yeah, something special that I kind of hold on to and that kind of the cherry on the on the cake to to sort of hold on to for the rest of my life. But it's definitely something whenever I think about kind of my best memory, it's one of the ones just being able to do that in front of my family and uh, yeah, share that moment. So. Um, bro, Liam, with like, obviously you've on the, on the AB's jersey a fair amount of times, bro. Um, do you remember like your first, your debut, like what the feeling was like to sort of get picked for the first time? run out for the first time, be in the hucker for the first time, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, bro, it's, uh, it was 2008 in Scotland, uh, in Edinburgh. Um, I just remember the game going so quickly. Um, I was nervous as hell. Um, I remember we played up in uh, Murrayfield, which was one of, the, you know, another a rugby experience that uh, people need to go go over and experience. Um, my whole family, not my whole family, but uh, I've, got, I've got a pretty big family, but most of my brothers and sisters um, came to that game, which was awesome to, to have them there. Um, yeah, I just remember seeing the jersey uh, when you got, got it presented and just thinking it was a, a massive, um, you know, wasn't real, just a massive dream. Um, and then, yeah, just getting out there in the game. Honestly, they told me the game will go just like that, and sure enough, it did. Um, I can't really <laughs> remember too much of, of that game, um, but it was just a real proud moment. Uh, for myself to, to be able to put, a, put that black jersey on. Full, full stadium must have been. Loud. Yeah, full stadium. Full stadium, loud, man. Because those the thing about Europe uh, fans, they they know how to cheer their, their team on. Eh? And um, it's just their, their culture. They sing, they they whistle. Um, like if you've ever seen a, a French club game or a top 14 game, you see them with their flares and their bloody um, well, they trumpets and drums oh. and whatnot. And... It's all go, um, and and it's uh, that's what I love about you know the Europe sort of um, style of, of rugby, how they see rugby and how they they support it. Um, so yes, this is awesome to be able to play like even playing in Carter Farms Park up in um, Millennium in, in Wales, like you know seventy five thousand, and the Welsh just sing the whole time. And it's uh, even if you're not playing, you can just feel the vibe and the, the buzz, and it's just uh, awesome experiences and memories that um you know that I'm really grateful to have uh, during up my my life. About um about your first hucker, bro, out there for the first time. That's it. Nah, hucker was all good, bro. I, I grew up in Rotorua, bro, so it's uh, it's in my DNA. Yeah, um, yeah. Some other some other brothers uh, might might get a bit uh, a bit fucking my about it. Um, like watching uh, the young fellas now that play for the Chiefs, like guys like Simosoni, straight from Tonga. You see him go straight to the back of the hucker. <laughs> um, we well, see Big Brody Retallick. I think he's played about what eighty odd test matches. And oh, he's at the front now because he's the captain, but before you know, he used to make his way at the back, stand out like dogs balls because he's bloody two meters tall. Um, but yeah, for me, bro, it's it's it's, it's in my DNA, bro. So, um, we we're hucker when we we're bloody two years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys have like set positions where you have to stand? Do you guys like put your where you're standing beforehand, or is it just when you're on the field, you kind of just go onto your spot? Or it's changed a bit because uh, I guess the formation, but um, back when I first started doing it, you just, uh, you know, gave respect to the elders, let those fellas go go in front if they wanted to. Um, yeah. But yeah, being big, black and ugly, um, they always sort of encouraged the ugly fellas to go up front. So that's why, you know, myself, Jose and Ma Nonu would be up front. Um, but yeah, you'd always, in the, you know, always give that respect to the, the old fellas first let them go where they want to go and then, you know, just try and sneak up there if you can. Yeah, right. Yeah. How mean is it to see Quinn out there, bro? Yeah, mean, bro. And he was awesome on the weekend. Yeah. Um, he's got a massive future for him, bro. Like, he's already... Everyone knew he's, he's, he's an outstanding footballer. Um, and he's just a good kid, too. He's actually my neighbour. So, um, <laughs> oh, okay. it's, good, it's good, to, good to see him, uh, uh, yeah, have, have an awesome uh, game on the, on the weekend. Yeah, mean. Um... Moving on to like outside of footy, obviously you guys started this um, order CBD. Um, got some here as well. I've been using. I uh, used it for like the past week. Um, I was telling I was telling Teddy the other the other day. Um, I used it for the first time that for the first night, and 
it would have been the best sleep of my life if my son wasn't waking me up all night. But I fucking swear to God, like it was, I just felt like, um, I compared it to, and this is probably bad, but I compared it to like, um, <laughs> where like when you, when you have like tremolo or something, like after a game and um, you feel real like relaxed and like you could sleep forever. Like I felt like that. And um, yeah, so, so we, how, how did you guys sort of start that and or think about it and get into it? I suppose it was like a, um, it was like a combination of, of, uh, luck kind of common interests and being in the right place at the right time kind of thing but Liam and I both kind of use CBD for for our sort of athlete environments and uh, trying to get the most of our bodies and that but um, I think Liam's the same he'd probably tell you the same but after using it and sort of experiencing the benefits seeing how much it could help people in our circle our family as well and like people that like my mum who my little brother who's sort of was suffering with different things and um and just the lack of awareness of it so then that kind of that was a big driver too to to trying to find something safe that we could share with our family and that but then uh meeting uh, our food business partner jeremy hardy who's who's got the pharmaceutical industry knowledge he kind of brought it all together and brought it to life and liam and i were able to just sit back and be like okay well um we have obviously believe in the cbd and what it's done for us but um this is the kind of the safety aspect and the quality and all that uh, stuff. Kind of communicated that to our man, and then he was able to go off and and uh, bring it to life and and make sure that it ticked all the boxes. So, um, yeah, that and then yeah, the rest of the history was kind of a bit of a, a luck too. That well, I don't know if it was luck or it was silly, but we it was just before the pandemic, and we kind of sussed it all out, and then the pandemic hit. And we just decided to go with it anyway. And we're like, nah, we've done all the all the work. And I mean, if, the quality, if it's quality and people uh, enjoy it, then it's gonna, you know, kick off. So we just ended up just going hard. And this we're about twelve months in now. So well, over twelve months. So um, it's yeah, it's been been challenging ahead. It's it's challenges, but um, seems to be going alright. Eh? Yeah. yeah, we're getting there, bro. We're getting there. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm just really big into to natural health products. Um, I've always, uh, from from early on in my career, um, from day dot, probably got it from the sevens when I was a young fella, um, just about how important your body is and what you put into your body. Um, so I'm all about that healthy eating and active lifestyle. Um, probably over, I overboard a bit. Um, I remember growing up, used to just eat uh, boiled chicken and, and boiled veggies. Um, which isn't, yeah, shake your head, it's disgusting. And it is disgusting. Um, but that's what I've done. And that's, you know, I don't have any education around it. I just, I just done that because I came from the school of Titch. Um, but as I obviously get older, you know, I was popping a lot of uh, anti-inflammatories. Um, so popping them like lollies. But uh, one of my good mates, Tim Nana Williams, actually collapsed one, uh, one evening and got rushed to the hospital because of that. Really? And uh, from, yeah, just, yeah, he was taking them like on the go all the time, just because, you know what, we put our bodies through um, all the, the pain and whatnot. Um, and then when I saw that, that sort of, that freaked me out. And, um, you know, I, I try and use the Voltaren minimal when I could, like um, I've, ever since that. So I try and stay away from those and I try to use food as, as my natural anti flams um, And then it was when I got to France and then um, the all the players were, were on CBD. Um, and there's another company there that sort of, uh, sort of gave me a, a test of it. And the same as you, bro, lost when I took my first one. I slept like straight 10 hours deep the whole time. Uh, it was no joke. Like I was just like fully into it and knowing that recovery is, is a real big uh, part of, of what we do. Um, and sleep is, is the best. Yeah. Um, uh, that really helped and I just jumped on it. And then I think I, I sent a post about uh, this other CBD and Teddy's just like, bro, you, you want to start up our own? And I was just like, yeah, I was so keen. Um, Took some back home to, to my old man. My old man has um had real bad arthritis in his hands. Um, once he, he took that, he he was skeptical at first because because uh, of all CBD and obviously where it comes from. Um, took a lot of convincing from to take that. It's all natural. It's got got no bad things in it. Um, once he took it, his uh, his arthritis it didn't cure his arthritis. It just helped him have a, a easier life. And from there, I was sold on it. Went back to France. Um, Teddy sent through a message. I was like, yeah, bro, let's do this. Um. 
to be fair, Teddy and Jeremy do all the, the hard work. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty hard back here in New Zealand, especially with the restrictions we have here um, to, to, to do what I can, uh, to help out. Um, but Teddy and, and Jeremy are really the, the brains and the guts behind it all. So is, is it a massive French thing? Is, is that why? No, well, like that's that's probably why we've we've been able to be or well, have a little bit of success in France, being a, a French brand and uh, having a French version of the product. Is that there is there's nothing over here that's French. Well, there wasn't when we started. Um, uh, so then, yeah, so we've we've kind of had a jump on the on the on on the competition kind of thing. Um, but no, yeah, so that that was partly the reason why too. So we were both at the time sort of playing in France and being like, man, there's, there's nothing here for us. So um, then our man that we met up, uh, we linked up with, able to sort of make it come to life and then and do it. But, you know, it's, it's had its challenges, bro, but it's, uh, cause the, it's funny, like the, the marketing of it, uh, you're not allowed, actually allowed to market CBD or tell anyone about its benefits or anything. So it's quite a tricky, tricky industry to be in, bro. Um, Why is that? Um, oh, I, it's because it's very close to the pharmaceutical industry and uh, and that. So, just there's so many restrictions on um, on the communication about uh, it being a medicine and curing all the different things. Even if it does benefit in certain ways, you're not actually allowed to claim those benefits yep. unless there's like a very expensive um, studies that pharmaceutical studies that they get put through, which usually takes years as well and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, um, yeah, so that there's just big restrictions on, on it, bro. And then, yeah, so then it's quite, we're quite lucky to have the networks that we do and that um, just naturally people hear about it and get to experience it. And then it's mainly just word of mouth of, of yeah, it's just what people experience. So, um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reword my next question then because it was going to be what are the benefits of it? <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's, it's all good to talk about. It's more just like, you know, like when we're on our social medias or, or that type of thing or official stuff. Yeah, so what, <laughs> in, in particular, um, arthritis, because um, my my nan struggles bad with arthritis. Um, my sister's partner gets it a bit. Um, I'm pretty intrigued, like what, what it actually, like how it actually helps it, like in terms of the person. What does it do for you? So, well, well um, everyone's got a, an endocannabinoid system, which is kind of connected to all the different systems in, in your body. And basically it uh, helps balance it out and bring you to homeostasis, which wherever there's imbalances in your body, getting a bit technical now, but yeah, wherever there's imbalances, bro, just, just sort of um, upregulates whatever you need or downregulates whatever you're overstimulated. And then that's usually... Um, how it sort of affects the different uh, systems. So especially with arthritis, I think that's more about the anti-inflammatory. So that kind of helps your the inflammation in your blood sort of decrease. And then uh, people usually uh, feel like it, it helps them with that. But I think the sleep, the sleep has a lot to do with it too. Like Liam's obviously can speak more about it too, but um, having an awesome sleep and that's where you do it, where your body recovers most, most of the time. If you're in, in deep sleep uh, for mo most of the night, your body's going to be able to recover in whatever way it needs to. So if you're doing that all week, all week, every night, then uh, you're, yes. Yeah, so wherever your imbalances are, it's going to help. So basically in a nutshell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, what about like um, other sort of, benefits you, you find with using cbd so you got your um like better sleeps which i already noticed straight away um you know, all that sort of stuff that they say helps with arthritis and things like that like i've seen like anti-anxiety depression it helps with that sort of stuff as well yeah bro so like i sort of speak from like a personal experience especially from the i didn't really experience the um, when i was taking other cbds i didn't really experience the uh, anti-inflammatory side of things too much but I think that was more because I wasn't consistent with the product so when I was able to sort of have access to my own sort of CBD and uh, have access to it and use it properly and use it consistently wasn't until I was able to do that for an extended period of time 
and then start playing footy and then start putting my body under stress, like getting uh, cork thighs or black eyes and that, I got to see how fast my body actually recovered from those inflammatory sort of injuries and that. That's what sort of amazed me. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, um, yeah, so that, that was a big thing. But then also with the, when you speak, touch on the, the anti uh, the anxiety stuff, I think um, that's probably, you probably touched on it too when you're saying that you just feel relaxed and that I'm sure people um, that suffer from anxiety and that, and they're quite high strung and that they say that the CBD does kind of bring you down and calm you. So that feeling that you're getting sort of before you're ready for bed, I'm sure that's going to help people that are feeling like they're high strung all day. So if you're taking that in the morning, that's obviously going to help calm your head as well. And, so think straight and, and yep. that. So, um, Liam, how often, how often do you use it? And like, when do you sort of use it to find the, or that you've found sort of the best um, benefits for you? Yeah, I just take, uh, I take mine just before I go to bed. I'm, uh, I'm too scared to take it in the morning. I know Teddy takes it in the morning with his coffee, just because I know how relaxed and how deep my sleep's are. I don't want to be walking around the, you know, the day. But um, yeah, but just as Teddy has alluded to, like all the, the, the benefits, that it does have like just consistently taking it you can just feel the change in, in your body yep. um and in your system so i think people also get a bit confused that they think cbd is an actual cure like it's not curing the whatever the problem is it's just you know helping those symptoms feel better um and you know there's so much research and everything behind it um that it's you know it's for me it's it's a natural uh, it's a natural product that comes from a natural organic plant um, where an anti-inflammatory comes from a who knows yeah, yeah. Um, you know but if, if you're taking a painkiller to, to decrease your pain you should be worried straight away that you're taking something that's called a painkiller you know you're sort of like just putting a, a tape over it where a natural product like CBD um, natural plant organic um, it's got to be good for you so um, it's, a, it's been a real interesting pro, um, process um, I'm learning so much about it. Like Teddy's the guru between us all um, about the CBD. Like, but I can't even pronounce the word that he. What did you say? Cannabinoid or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know we do have that um, receptors in our brain. So, um, you know, I'm I'm learning and along this journey and getting educated. And I think the biggest thing when I came back to New Zealand was how um, uneducated we are as Kiwis about it and the benefits of it. Um, and just the. The negative, uh, not response, but the, the 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 negative way that we looked at at CBD, um, yeah, which was which was quite strange. It was quite weird. And when I came back from, from France, that's when we had the referendum, um, and so it was a bit of a hot topic. But yeah, just a lot of negative comments about it, um, and it's just people just being uneducated and not having the full understanding of, of actually what it can do and the benefits of it. Yeah, that's crazy how like. Um influenced we are by society and that because like you like you just said like that just made me think holy shit that's true like we put painkillers in our body and like we don't know what the fuck's in it um it's called a painkiller and like all these negative connotations around like marijuana and stuff like that and obviously cbd's in it people go oh god don't do that it's got it comes from marijuana or whatever um yet yeah, that's a natural plant yet yeah, but we're happy to go um, and get a prescription for a bunch of chemicals to chuck in our body. I find that crazy. Do you, do you find um, that like there there is a struggle with like negative connotations attached to CBD? I think uh, especially back here in New Zealand, um, a lot of people are being more open to it um, because they're starting to hear like to say word of mouth about um, the benefits of CBD and what it can do. And when people realise that it has no THC, so that's the other side of the plant, which is the the, say the bad stuff or the, the good stuff, whatever you uh, like to see it as. But um, when people understand and, and start, like I said, getting more knowledge about it, then people are more open to take it. And then once one person takes it, boom, it's just a flow and effect. And they tell a friend and it just, oh, I've got bad sleeping problems. Or oh, you should take this, this. And then, you know, that's how it gets around. Because uh, like Teddy said, just the rules and regulations around um, promoting CBD. Like I wish I could just go out there and just, just promote it. Um, opening and willingly but because obviously the rules and regulations of what we have here is i can't so yeah. um and it's to be fair to we've done pretty well for just having a word of mouth 
business pretty much. Like I do a repost of uh, one of our auto posts, you know, once a month, but you know, good old Instagram can put blocks on how many views and what not you get. So um, yeah, it's, it's growing, it's growing, which is it's pleasing to see the, the education and, and the positive um, look onto the CBD. Is that the main struggle you have found with running like a CBD oil company is the like, the fact that you can't sort of promote the benefits of it as much, like without scientific backing or whatever it is. Hundred percent. I think yeah, it's just uh, just trying to educate in in ways that engage people because people aren't gonna be willing to sort of try something new or go away from what they've always done unless they have confidence in it. And then it's hard to be able to. Um, educate people confidently when you can't really use the specific uh, benefits or, you know, wording. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's probably, it's definitely difficult, but yeah, that's, that's kind of been our main mission is just to um, just push CBD as a industry forward. And just as long as it doesn't matter if they're trying our, our brand or someone else's brand, as long as they're, they're trying it or sort of stepping in and uh, experiencing the benefits that it can, can help with whatever, because there's a lot like a lot of our um, people that use our brand is uh, aren't actually athletes and it's people looking for some relief in, in different uh, ailments so and that's and hearing those stories are, is what kind of motivates us and drives us too like just hearing people saying just can't and they'll just off the back of their their selves they'll message us and or email us and tell us the story of how they've stopped all their painkillers or their medication and they're just using our, our CBD brand. And yeah, so that's, that's kind of cool, bro. That's, that's definitely the cherry on the cake in terms of our CBD, uh, in terms of our product and wanting us to make it better and kind of um, spread our platform, use yep. our platform to spread it, bro. Well, that clearly shows your intentions that um, just the fact that you don't care if they use your brand or someone else's just mm. clearly shows that like, what why you're in it is for it's like a good good reason to yeah. actually promote the benefits of this product um because yeah. it's word of mouth this does that mean like um ambassadorships or something is is going to be something that's high on your on your list like kind of um people seeing other people using it of high status and being like oh they use it like i'm going to use it that sort of thing i think athletes have definitely been a a, a huge vehicle for us because of the because of that restriction. Yep. Um, but I think like, especially even at the start, like um, uh, we're trying to find a good balance because us being athletes as well, sort of see a huge benefit in, um, in ownership rather than um, being used for your image and that. So, um, so yeah, so that was, that was a big, big driver as well. Like us, Liam and I both kind of, um, being ambassadors for other brands and using our brand to promote other people's brands. And then uh, being like, uh, why don't we own our own thing, whether or not be CBD or something else. And then, uh, and yeah, so there's a, there's a fine balance between that of like, in terms of not just taking from the athletes or ambassadors that we use and figuring out how we can do a beneficial um, partnership with them that gives back to them for the, them using their credibility and their platform to help us. So we're trying to, help them as well in some sort of way which is yeah that's funny that balance as well bro me well i, I chucked up a q a um on the insta i'll run through them um there was a couple questions that i was going to ask you but then the q a anyway so we'll run through it on there and um the first one which is probably a main one is can like can you buy it in new zealand and anything around that what's you brother <laughs> it's not me, bro. It's you. <laughs> You're the logistics no. man, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know well, the ins no. and outs and rules of it, bro. Yeah, whole, at the, it's difficult, bro. Like, so you can buy so CBD in general. You can buy CBD in general if you have a uh, prescription from a doctor. Um, you can't buy auto CBD at the moment uh, from your from a, a pharmacy because uh, you need to. Uh, go through the Ministry of Health. As a CBD brand, you have to go through the Ministry of Health and, and sort of jump through a few few hoops that take uh, quite a while, which we've been uh, working through at the moment. Um, and hopefully hopefully this time next year, we're speaking to you again and we're in New Zealand. 
because uh, that's that's our goal, bro. So we've we've been trying to do it right over here and lay a good foundation in Europe so then we can actually bring it home and bring it home right. But eventually, bro, like hopefully someone listens to this and hears it, but eventually we want to we want to be New Zealand made too. So we want to be manufactured in New Zealand. Um, there's there's more and more cannabis or hemp farms popping up over in New Zealand um, who are manufacturing CBD and that. So eventually our brand fully from soil to oil being a, a New Zealand brand and, and sort of sharing our uh, mahi with the world with, is, our, is our ultimate goal. But um, at, yeah, so at the moment you need to buy CBD. Long story short, you need, you need a, a prescription from a doctor, but all the CBD at the moment isn't available in New Zealand. But we're, we're working real hard to make it make sure that happens one day. So is that the goal to get it in like get it in pharmacies? In New Zealand? Yeah, well, if that's going to be our only kind of option at the moment, I think uh, just our goal is just to be available at home, eh? So like um, hmm. you said at the start. We want to make it accessible to my neighbor. Like at yeah. the moment, it costs people $300, $400, you know, a bottle of CBD. Like me and Teddy want to bring all our CBD back to New Zealand and make it accessible for everybody at, you know, we do want to make a profit off it. We, you know, we're, yes, we're a business, but we want people to benefit from, from this, this product at a, you know, at a reasonable rate, not at these rates that some companies are, are charging people, which is sad to see because these people really need it. Um, I was talking with a, a mum who has a kid that has real bad seizures um, and CBD is the only thing that can um, help them control it. Um, and they're paying so 400 bucks um, a bottle um, and they have to have like two bottles a month. So, um, you know, that, that, that pops up, um, you know, that, that's a high, high bill to have at the end of the year. So that's the, the main goal is to bring it home and make it accessible for everyone that, are, you know. If it, became, if it became legal without a prescription, would you be able to just sort of buy it online like you guys already do? Yep. So you can, you'd be able to buy it online or yeah, in, in retail. So um, at the moment in France, that's exactly what happened. So um, you have, so they've just got legislation here that um, you've got to have a, um, you've got to have a reading of less than 0.02% THC. And then if you've got that, then you can sell in pharmacies, supermarkets, anywhere or online. So it's all legal. So yes, it's uh, and it's not actually considered a drug, so it's uh, considered a complementary food over here. Oh, man. But, yeah, so in New Zealand at the moment, because of like the ref, uh, reform, um, that cannabis thing, that they, uh, um, it's considered, it's still considered a drug in New Zealand. So um, that's kind of why it, it's in the same sort of class as, as marijuana or THC. So yeah. it's the big challenge over there. To give a bit of perspective, like what's what's the rough sort of price that you pay for, like from you guys, um, for the like the bottle and how big it is. So we've, um, oh, I haven't really done any. Well, so you'd probably pay that four hundred dollars for like a, a um, a three thousand milligram, or probably even less, eh? Like a two thousand milligram, ten mil. Mm -hmm. You're probably paying about four hundred dollars, and then similar product for us, you'd probably pay one hundred and fifty NZ. So it's uh it's yeah, pretty much half the price. But yeah, it's uh it's also like uh, people don't realize the the quality of CBD too. Like there's ways of um, trying to get scientific here. There's ways yeah. of of actually putting the the, the CBD to an oil, which yeah. makes a big difference also, and and the quality and how many, how much CBD is actually in a drop? Because uh, Teddy knows all the, the numbers and stats behind it, how much actually CBD is in, in a drop? Because some bottles say that there's X amount, but it's actually only that amount in the bottle where our product is actually what is said in the bottles in the in the drop of it. Um, so, is it different? Yeah, like I said, bro. Yeah, there's different strengths. Um, what have we got, Teddy? We've got a 10%, pretty much 10% all the way up to a 30% area. Yeah, ten percent, fifteen percent, and uh, a twenty percent. But um, so the strength is is pretty so pretty much in a bottle. So you'll have a, a certain amount of CBD, and the rest of it's going to be a carrier oil. So your body can't actually process it without a carrier oil. So in uh, in our bottles, it's mixed with MCT oil, which is 
essentially coconut coconut oil has its own benefits that too but um but yeah so what it, what Lee was sort of talking about is a, a, one there's a there's a uh, quality of the CBD actual CBD but then there's a quality of the the carrier oil that some some companies use and some more effective than others and you could take a similar strength from two different companies that use different uh, carrier oils and uh, one's cheaper than the other and obviously if you take a cheaper product you're not going to get as much benefit from it so there would be like anything like dependent on like how um severe what you have is or whatever you're feeling depends on what sort of strength you run yeah so the you'd probably and it's it's kind of your tolerance to like your, your tolerance to to drugs or or cbd um your height your weight all that type of thing too so usually you'd uh you'd take a, a higher strength uh if you're a bigger a bigger man or whatever and if you're your whatever your ailments stronger so if you've got a severe sleep disorder you yep. take the higher strength as well but kind of what people um misinterpret too is like say you've got a 10 percent bottle yep. uh compared to a 20 percent bottle all you have to do so you could take 10 drops of this 20 percent but to get to the same amount of cbd as that 10 drops you just take 20 drops of the 10 percent so you just have to take more to get the same amount. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So essentially, that's just going to make your product last less. Like you, you know, uh, it's yep. going to go through it faster. So, um, but yeah, um, <laughs> that's what I was trying to explain. <laughs> Very good. Thing. Uh, look, uh, someone asked Liam, "What was your favorite All Black moment?" Oh, favorite All Black moment would probably be 2015 World, World Cup. Uh, that team had been together for a while. Um, gone through a lot of hard work together, so it was just rewarding to to come away with the old water move. How how, how long is away for for that? Oh, bro, we're six seven weeks. Yeah, something like that, bro. Crazy. Yeah. How do you find like the um the World Cup scenes? Bit different, yeah, I, yeah, they're different. It's um, oh, it's a tournament, bro. Anything can happen on on the day. Um, same, similar to sevens, bro. Any team can win on the day. Um, but it's just the the uh, the chance to to be together for for a long time is awesome. Just because you know you, you grow some some really strong friendships. Um, you know, some of my best friends come from from teams that I've been in a long time. So, um. Yeah, that's that's one good side of it, and you know the bank account ain't too uh, shabby too. At the end of it, uh, when you're away together for a long time, I think the All Black boys are away this this time is it 16 weeks, I think. Long well, like four months or something, eh? Something like that, yeah. And then um, was it Quinn or might have been Simo Sony came to me and goes, "Docs, it's X amount of dollars that we're gonna get at the end of it. You're gonna believe it." Wait, what? So, we are we allowed to talk about what the the. The um, fee is, it's like a, you get like a weekly um, fee when you're someone like Quinn or something that's been bought in. Uh, I think Quinn will probably be just on normal, yeah. yeah I think it's, it's it's back in back in my day. Uh, I don't know if it's still the same, it's probably still the same, probably even a bit, but, but more. I think it's like seven and a half a week that you get before tax. So um, you definitely earn it though. You know, the, the boys definitely earn it. They, they put their bodies and their mental state um, through a lot. Um, what, you're, not, you're not spending anything while you're away too, so it's just, it's yeah, you're not nothing. You're not spending anything, any of it, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. But um, crazy story about you that not many people know. Go on, brother. Classic go, Teddy. Tell the tell the one about the sense of prey, bro. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. Bro, that's yeah. Put me on the spot. <laughs> Go, yeah. I, I, bro, I'm, a, I'm dead life, bro. So I'm, I'm boring as hell at the moment, eh? So I, I go to footy, come home, and then I my shift starts. So I, like, I go to footy all day, and then as soon as I get home, I get the kids handed to me because it's it's mumsy's uh, break time when I get home. So I'm full time at the moment. But um, crazy story. 
Um, can we spark one up, bro? It might spark one up for me. No, I'm the same, bro. I'm, I've got no crazy stories. I've had no time. I've been fully invested in in this rugby journey yeah. since I was bloody 16 years old. So um, the only crazy things that I've had is, is either come through rugby or been in a rugby scene or environment. So, oh, we'll uh, rugby the next. I've got, actually, oh. no, no. I've got to create like a. It's a pretty buzzy story. Like I um, just from me being at, in France, just random. So like I uh, just going to the gym, I was working out. I, was, I didn't have a contract at the time. So I went to a, a public gym just to keep keep in shape. And then uh, a random dude comes up to me, older fella, and shows me, uh, shows me a, a YouTube video of working out and kind of just asked me a few questions. Felt, felt sorry for him. So I ended up asking him to, I was like, oh, here, I'll, I'll take you through some stuff. Couldn't speak any English. So we're doing it by sign language. Uh, long story short, like after a, I end up like PTing him. So I, I told him, I was like, man, if you've, he's trying to lose weight. And I'm like, I'm coming every day at this time. If you want some help, come at this time too. And you can work out with me. Fast forward a couple of weeks. We end up, um, oh, I end up like, we end up going for, for sort of dinner um, after, after one of the workouts. And then kind of ask him, so, oh, what do you do? Uh, play rugby, blah blah blah. And then, so, what do you do? And he's like, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a CEO of uh, these different companies. He owns two or three companies." Fast forward another few months, he ends up being a business mentor of mine. Gives me, uh, gives me a few awesome tips about business, and um, still friend to this day. But then, and then pays for a trip for us to go down to um, Morocco, where he's from, and stay in his village in Morocco, and and shows me around Morocco. Uh, randomly just from being kind enough to be like yo come and I'll, I'll, I'll show you for this workout and then yeah fast forward a few years later and then and yeah still friends bro and then he whenever I've got any business questions or whatever I can call him up and because he's French too so he's French so um, he sort of helped us navigate through some of the some of the challenges over here too so yeah it's a it's ah, crazy. that's what we were after bro that's <laughs> <laughs> but like you can go on to my, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a video on my Instagram. I end up making a video with him. Um, he took me to this, he took me to this rock, bro. I did a hucker for him. So he ended up, so he took me around his, uh, his village, showed me, showed me all the stuff in Morocco. And then to say thank you, I, I did a, I did a hucker for him because he, he'd never seen one, wanted to see it. And I filmed it. And then, so then, yeah, so I got a hucker. He, he, uh, I did a, did him a hucker on the, on this rock that kind of was uh, on the, um, was where the, the Atlantic Ocean, I think it is, meets the Mediterranean Sea. It's in that bit there. And then there's like, there's a tip, bro. And then it's on this rock that kind of overlooks that, bro. And did a huck on the edge of it. And then he's in there with his traditional gown, gives me gives me a gown too. And then, yeah, got to, got me a gown. Give him a hungi and then boom. And then oh, bro, you, take, yeah. You're going to have to send me that video and we'll snip it there and we'll check it out. Yeah, bro. No, it's uh, it was crazy, bro. It was crazy, crazy just to see where that one interaction sort of took. So me for the next twelve months with this dude. So I lived in the in the same. I was in Bordeaux, lived in Bordeaux for a year, and then throughout that year, it was kind of when we sparked up Bordeaux as well, and helped guide me through. His wife was a was a um, lawyer, helped guide us through sort of sparking sparking up our paperwork and that. So yeah, uh, me. Definition of good karma, bro. Does that spark anything, Liam, or what? Uh, I'm always nice, bro. It's always nice to be nice. Uh, I haven't, I'm lucky enough to, to be able to have that, though. Uh, but uh, the only crazy things I can think of is just like things I've been able to see around the world, like playing rugby in Delhi in India. Never thought that would have been. When was that? That was possible, bro. Uh, Commonwealth Games. Um, can't remember what year that was though. Uh, maybe 2014? 10 or nah, 10 or 9, maybe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just very bad to like see places like that, you know, spending the weekend in, in Monaco with the prince. Um, just like random, random things like that, bros. I guess would be crazy to some people. Yeah. Oh, it is crazy, but <laughs> nothing like Teddy. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> nah, that's me. Yo, um, the best coach you guys have played under. Mm. Well, for me, like it's a bit cliche, but um, I was I was very fortunate. I, f- I feel very fortunate to be able to be a part of Gordon Titchen's legacy, and I uh, came in in his last year. And a lot of people say that, like you know, he's a bit of a crazy fellow the way he um, trains and pushes the boys. But for me, it was exactly kind of what I needed at the time yeah. because of. Um, I mean, it wasn't too technical, but the he's just a massive, he's massive, massive on mentality, and like Liam be able to say, tell you, but he at the start of trainings, our warm up would be like an hour of him just smashing us, and then after about an hour of us being smashed, our our tanks empty, and that's when training starts. Let's go, okay, now let's train, and then you you train for another forty minutes, hour, just doing sort of repeated speed kind of seven on seven and uh and but yeah and just going to in that time we're in like especially throughout that year i was sort of able to see places that i never thought that were possible for me to take my body and um my mentality and that and then that kind of springboarded me up to be able to sort of carry on and like uh and continue so uh yeah for me it's titch <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was actually thinking about this last night. I don't know why. Um, just probably how fortunate I have been during my career of the coaches I have had. Um, so I always try and take something out of every coach that I've had. Um, and I've been, man, if I go through the coaches I've had, I've had from back in the day, Ian Foster, John Mitchell, Warren Gatlin, obviously Graham Henry, Steve Hansen, Dave Rennie, Wayne Smith. Um, Fuck. Tom Commentary, Andrew Strawbridge. So I've been like so fortunate to have those people um, in my career. Um, and I've learned so much from each and every single one of them. Um, and like I said, I try and take things from, from each coach that I've had. Um, but to have that sort of coaches throughout your career, not many people could probably be that fortunate to have. Um, it's, just what, it's just what we breed here in the, in the Waikato. Um, nah. but, uh, but for me, um, I really enjoyed um, being coached by Dave Rennie and Wayne Smith. Um, and I think I took my game to a whole new level under um, their sort of coaching regime. Um, you know, I got able to get back into the All Blacks because of it. I started playing some of the best rugby that I've, I, I could play in my, in my prime um, was, was under them. Um, but if I go back to the start, or, you know, I've got so much to, to um, be grateful for, for Titch as well. Because um, like Teddy said, I, I learned, you know, I came from the school of Titch. Um, and I had him for more than a year. I had him for four or five years. So um, having building that real strong foundation of what hard work and work ethic look like and mental toughness, um, especially at a young age. Um, like, again, I just go through that whole journey from that start to, to where I am now. Um, I've been pretty lucky to, to have those sort of coaches in my life. Mm. What, a, what was it about the, the Chiefs coaches that helped you springboard to the next level? Um, well, everyone sort of heard about uh, the culture we've had in the Chiefs, um, and we've always had that um, since day dot since I was there. Um, obviously, when Renz turned up, he just took it to a whole new level. We really connected with our, our, our community, our people of, of the Chiefs region. Uh, we learned a lot about the history about the Chiefs and about that area and where we come from and who we play for. Um, and there's a lot of powerful things that I didn't know. Um, I had been in the team for six or seven years already before he turned up, and that really, you know, give us something more to play for. So we weren't just playing for, for whatever. We were playing for a lot more than, than just a rugby game, which is really powerful when you can get a, a group of, of people to, to one common goal to do that. Um, and I think the, the strongest point was that um, their strength was that they made everyone um, feel belonged to this one tribe. Mm. Um, and we worked hard, man. Like... We worked hard. We would smash each other. Like Thursdays was pretty much game day intensity. 30 minutes just going at each other, um, keeping each other accountable. Uh, Wayne Smith was always big on having the two best 15s um, on the field. So we would just be just pushing each other every day um, in the gym, out on the, on the rugby field. Uh, they used to tell the, the bin juice fellas, the, uh, the non-starting 15, if they, they wanted to play, you know, they'd whisper in the air and say, you want that jersey? Go, go knock out. <laughs> oh, they go knock him out, but just you know, go get stuck into this fella. So, um, man, it was it was brutal, 
but uh, again, one of the most enjoyable campaigns that I've been in um, and learned so much from. Yeah, I've, even like to this day, I still hear all the boys, um, a few of my mates that are now in there in that chief system, um, just the culture and and what what's bred in there with all the boys and how tight it is and the community it is. Um, it's mean to see you. Eh? Did you go up yeah, to see awesome. footy, bro? Yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, so I only went um, my last two. Wait, let me guess. For your last two years, you went to St. Kent's. Oh, classic. <laughs> you too, Teddy? Did you go through the last two years or your last two? <laughs> just one, just one. Oh, classic. <laughs> no. Nah. I, I was a fully paying student. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, two, two years, probably close to the... Um, Close to the two best, or definitely the two best years of my schooling life, bro. Like, um, just the experiences we got to receive there, and like the whole mm. big school kind of thing. Like, I mean, I went, I went to Tauranga Boys, which was like still a, um, still like a massive school, but not like as in like the, the wealth of the school and the kind of people that are there and the actual school itself. Like, holy fuck! I went, I went in St. Ken's Gates, and I was like, holy shit! Like, this is like a city, bro. Um, yeah. just like the and like the everyone getting behind the team and stuff like you didn't really get that down here in Tauranga like everyone turning up to all the games painting and um, writing your name on their back and all that sort of stuff like you didn't really get that here how did you find it? Yeah bro I was a because I went to I went in year 10 so I, I my first year I went to Papakura High which is yeah total, total opposite of St. Kent's yep. and then uh but it was a it was a culture shock, eh? It was a big culture shock, and uh, but yeah, it was like you say, it was like uh, my first sort of taste of experiencing a world bigger than your own, and then saying, oh, okay, there's something something else other than what I've seen every day, and that kind of then yeah started that uh, obsession of trying to get new experiences and yeah. continue to see what's on the other side, bro. But yeah, no, it was massive, bro. I ended up being a, a oh, you you would have been a boarding house boy, eh? You would have stayed in the boarding house, Bruce. Up. Were you up there or no? Yeah, yeah. So, well, my year ten, I wasn't, and then um, and then I was gonna leave. I couldn't afford to to stay because I wasn't on full scholarship. Yeah. I couldn't afford to stay, and then um, a, a lady ended up randomly giving the school some money to offer me uh, a scholarship to stay, bro. And they uh, they ended up. And then, then, yeah, they ended up offering me uh, the boarding house. So if I could, if I'd stay in the boarding house, I'd, I'd keep me on. So then I went up there in uh, year 11 and then stayed in best best years of my life, bro, just being in the boarding house and up there with the boys, bro. Uh, did you board land? No, nah, bro. No, nah, no. Nah. Hey, boy. Bred from Rotorua, bro. Homeboy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's the what's the um, boarding house there called again? Oh, I didn't no. know we had one, bro. I think oh. all our boys are from, from home. They've definitely got one now. Because they, <laughs> hey, they, yeah, they, 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 they <laughs> I've seen a few Fijians in there. Don't give me that. <laughs> um, but, you, uh, oh, sorry, yeah? No, I was just going to, uh, by your footy, but did you, because you ended up sparking up your business pretty mm -hmm. soon after school, or is, was that kind of your, what you ended up going down instead of footy, or are you still? Yeah, uh, yeah crate life bit of a mixer bro so um i went to wally's my first two years out some of the lions for, for two years and then yeah spent two years there and i was in like on injury replacement and stuff with the canes and that um and then my third year out of school i was still doing some like replacement stuff with the canes and then um i was a homeboy bro and i missed home um and i missed being around back home and to be honest to this day like i don't um i don't really talk about this to many people but I sort of not not the fact that I, Wellington was an awesome place and the cultures and like the boys there, everyone's fucking cool, man. Like it's it's a really cool place to be. But it wasn't for me, and I like regret moving away because I had the opportunity to be at home. I had the opportunity to come back and sign here and 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 be closer to home and be closer to my family network, and I didn't. Um, got rolled up the red carpet and um, took the bait and and went down there. And, thought that everything was going to be at my feet bro and and to be honest like it was but like I just kind of yeah because for me personally I needed to sort of be more around my family network at a younger age I couldn't really handle 
the, the moving to a big city by myself, no family or friends down there. And, um, but yeah, but I, I moved to, um, I played for Waikato my third year out. Um, and then I actually got given like a deal over in America, bro, um, which fell through. I don't know if you've seen all that, um, like the Moana Pacifica and, and stuff like that. And so we oh, got, okay. got a couple of terms off. One was in LA and then the ownership group fell through. And then the next one was in Hawaii and then that fell through. And I left my, my attend to go do that. And um, so, yeah, shit sort of just hit the fan. But I, I kind of was close to stopping playing rugby, bro. But I've kind of found a love for it at the moment. So um, we'll see how it goes, bro. But, Thanks. Um, yeah, I keep forgetting, bro. It's like still, still early days, man. Like, been so many places already like i i signed a, over in an aussie at the start of the year so i was over there playing the shoot shield for a bit um just to get back into it and then obviously things fell through over there uh, but yeah just forget that like the early days 20 still young bro yeah Teddy Teddy's a great example were you 26 when you came full professional yeah, yeah bro and that's but the that's, thing about our young fellas eh? like they mm. they just want it now 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 and they don't forget that man so much time, bro. I'm 37 and still going. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, eh? Like when you're young, bro, like you feel like if you haven't cracked it by 21, 22, you're not gonna you won't crack it. Yeah. So no, nah, hundred percent, bro. Still got plenty of time. So not Stay plenty of time, but like you know, like you do the money, but like bro, heaps of time to crack it, bro. I think I think starting this clothing things helped me um like give like a different perspective on mm. on rugby. Like I've kind of le- I left the game a bit for a bit, like just to play club rugby and stuff, and it's kind of shown me like, like before that I I had a bad look on rugby. It was like my everything, and it was like I had to felt it got to a point where it felt like a chore, you know, and like that's you don't want that. Like now I found the like why I love playing it again, and like I go out and play for my club, and I'm and I'm loving it. And so I think that finding something else that I could give a hundred percent into. Has shown me that rugby isn't the be all end all, and I do have things outside of rugby that interest me and excite me and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, nice, bro. Me. <laughs> 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 but, uh, the last question here for you was um, how to get a prescription um, for CBD oil in New Zealand. I, it, it depends on your doctor, eh, Liam? Like, the, we've had heaps of sort of mixed reviews on that like some doctors you can just go up to them and be like hey look i don't want to try these drugs i've got, I've got this so struggling with sleep i want to try cbd and then they they'll simply just write you a, a script for it and then others you kind of have to sort of jump through a few hoops but um be yeah, it i just my advice would just be to go and speak to your doctor and be like hey look i, I want to try cbd for whatever it is that you need to try it for or you think that uh, it'll help you and then doctors usually um uh, if they think it's it's it'll help then i'm sh- they're usually pretty okay with um prescribing it and then and yeah it's just trying to find the right my only thing with that my only my only like advice around that is just making sure you do some homework around the the cbd brand that you're going to get because after time that what's available may not be a good representation of a of a cbd product so then you're going to try it and think that it doesn't work or you know it doesn't help when it might just be the quality of the of the product, but yeah, again, I, I'm sort of talking from a, a general perspective. I don't really know what's available at home too much. So, can you get a prescription and then buy order? Uh, there is a there is a loophole, bro, that um, that you can do, um, but again, too, like it is, there's sort of restrictions around us approaching um doctors we're not actually allowed to speak to doctors and say hey you need a prescribe order or can you prescribe order yeah. um but yeah i'm i'm not too sure bro having uh that's that was a that was a little loophole that we were kind of exploring at the start which we we kind of shut down just because uh we figured it'd probably be more beneficial if we tried to do it the the ministry of health route and actually get it to the masses rather you know like and just be able to be available to everyone so but yeah we, yeah oh yeah it's a good question good question but they do if you do have questions about um cbd then you know people are more than welcome to to message us on order email yeah. us or on our instagram and 
we can give you the best advice. Like Teddy's is very edu educated about it. Um, and I'm still learning uh, the ropes, but um, you know, it's all about the research and getting an understanding and, and Teddy's the, the man for it. And we can help out where we can. Mean. Send you in the right direction. Uh, well, I hope, I'm hoping to see um, order in the, in the pharmacies soon. That'll be unreal to see it um, actually be like available to people where. Yeah, just yeah, being available to our friends, family, bro. That's, that's a dream, man. 100%. Well, mm. oh, um, been, been a wee while, so um, we'll wrap it up, bro. But I want to thank you guys for your time. Um, thanks for jumping on. And, um, I know it's, it's late over there, Teddy, and 12.30 now, would it be? Yeah, bro. Nah, it's, good. It's, been, it's been awesome to catch up, bro. It's been awesome to Love it. hear your story, too. Yeah. Bro, and obviously, yeah, thanks, Liam, for jumping on. It's probably the day off, so um, give no worries, bro. Morning is appreciate that. Appreciate both your times and um, everyone can find you. Order CBD. This uh, what's the Instagram handle? It's order underscore CBD, and then just the uh, our website's dub dot dub dot order CBD or dash CBD dot com. And then yes, yeah, so you can if anyone's got any questions, can hit us up on either the the website or or the Instagram. Try to help from whatever whatever questions you have. Me. All right. Thanks, brothers. Too easy, bro. Me. Yeah.